Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to say a special thanks to this opportunity you give me to present what Haiti has to do in order to maintain, to sustain this situation, zero confirmed case. I'm Dr. Elie Celestin, one of the three members of uh, the Haitian delegation. We have also the Dr. Hugan Ries and uh, Paul Christian Anfi de la DINEPA. DINEPA is an institu institution that, that uh, work on water, on the wash, especially in Haiti. Uh, uh, let me present the Haiti background. May you have to can see that uh, the first documented case outbreak in Haiti where was in October 20. And at the beginning, and when you see the, the epidemiological and the epidemiological trends, you can see that our incidents were very high at the beginning. It was it was 18. And now in in 2018. We was 0.3 percent per mil, and and now in 2019 we are in 0 0.02 only. Then uh, you see the trend that we are we, we are working to the end of cholera in in Haiti. Now I show you the incidence for the uh, the last three years. That means 2016, 2000, 2018. In the, the same, the same uh, case, the same. You see, the incidents at, in 2016 were three, seven, and and in 2017 it was one, and now is in in 2018 it was 0 0.3. The same thing for the total death suspected. We have no more debt in by cholera in Haiti now. This is the, uh, the epidemiological situation of cholera in Haiti. You see, uh, no major, no, no, no more, no, 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 no season peak. Now we have uh, we have many peak in a high peak in. In 2013, 14, and 16, but not now. In the in the rainy season, season in the same, we, we have, the incidence is very very low. Uh, we make the surveillance and the laboratory surveillance in 80, and very weak incidence, and no confirmation post post week. Uh, there is um, the, the last positive case wa was in in February. Until now, we have no no positive case. They were speaking in a, in, in a meeting about a, a positive case in a, by uh, by Doctor Sever in a meeting, but we don't we don't confirm it really this case. No. No confirmed case until February uh, 2018. Even if if the strengthening of the surveillance system may still be carried out and maintained during the long term period of 80 National Cholera Elimination Plan, we hope to eliminate cholera in 2020. In order to to determine the point where we have we can have the, our spot, we Dell, the Direction of Epidemiology of Haiti, Laboratory in Epidemiology, have done a quantitative analysis and a qualitative analysis. And we have a threshold can suspect a case for ten for ten thousand, and a second threshold it was. Uh, 20, 20 weeks. 
let me show you the the result of this uh, of this research we have four categories high medium low and medium low let me, let me speak about the 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 commune who we place in, in the high situation commune located in the upper right area of the graph where the high the the, the high this country have this this commune has high incidence and high percentage of cholera our this commune was las carobas cabaret mibale eh, capaitien etc then we determine to uh, by a qualitative analysis but we we focus on the period uh, 2010 and 2019 or the recent period uh, two common we consider two common with the with the cholera outbreak as priority the sous commune was common cognon commune and lester commune and uh, for cognon the reason is a, is a common in the border of the dominican republic and many people live, uh, uh, make a back and forth in the, in the two countries. They sometimes they go for, for work in the other country and they come back. And, and it was uh, very difficult for us to make the surveillance in this, in this border area. Uh, but uh, we, 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 we make some meeting with the Dominican Republic in order to, to give us access to this area in order to make uh, to make the rapid response for these cases. Then the, the outbreak were six or seven or more than six months. That's what it was a long outbreak. That's what we consider this commune that like an S hotspot. And the accessibility is very difficult in this area. Uh, is the result uh, let me present you the result of this hotspot. We have 12 hotspots here. But Taba was removed. There is a commune that we removed. It was Taba. We removed it because only 18% of cases reside in this commune. This, in this commune, there is an art facilities of where people come to take, to take care. Then, the people live, reside, or reside, I don't know exactly, uh, in Kwadebuke, but not in, in Taba. That's for we, we remove Taba of the list. And as I said, Koni Yongambua and Lister were added, were added due to different conceptual factors. Then here you can see here, you can see here all the, all the, Commune that we choice. Uh, don't, 12 communes were selected like I spot, and we recommend we are going to make vaccination in, in this commune, not in all places in this commune. We, are going, we have to speak tomorrow about, with, uh, we have a meeting tomorrow to speak more about this. Then uh, let me give the, the word to, to him. Okay. I'm going to speak for one or two minutes only. One minute, please. One minute, please. All right. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I'll be very brief. Um, so what we are looking at here is that I just want to make a few very quick points. The, the rapid response system uh, in Haiti, in place, has had dramatic success. We've had 96% of suspected cholera cases for the first 20 weeks of, of 2019 having a response, 91% uh, of those within 48 hours. Um, this has contributed in a major way to the decrease of cholera. It's been one of the main aspects. And the take-home message is that that has to be maintained for this year and for next year. The targeted wash 
we've had uh, for 2018 and 2019 are very uh, geographic specific. Our, our wash teams, which uh, I lead in the color response, have include you know portable uh, water system repairs, manual chlorination, sensitization, uh, portable water treatment units, uh, chlorination point monitoring and uh, also in the marketplaces. So uh, we are going to be giving a, a special event in, in uh, t tomorrow, and we can look at this uh, in more detail. But it's very important to say that maintaining the wash baseline in is necessary to really get all of the benefits to uh, pr uh, prevent the return. Uh, so we signed in February of 2019 the cholera elimination plan. The, the Public Health Minister of Haiti signed that. Uh, it's a document that I, Dr. Celestin, and, and two other major contributors uh, with a lot of assistance from, from our colleagues and, and the partners put together. And so the, the three main aspects of this are the coordination and strengthening surveillance strategy, the fight against prevailing, uh, preventing color transmission, particularly via the rapid response, and consolidation uh, of the gains of the, of the long-term strategy. So e each one of those has specific aspects, and we, again, we won't go into a lot of the details, but it is important to mention that uh, we really have to continue to invest both in the uh, rapid response as well as the surveillance, uh, as well as the uh, wash question. So with the surveillance, it's basically, this is a, a critical part of the long-term plan. Uh, the early detection and lab confirmation are absolutely essential aspects of that. And the, the cross-border question, I know a number of countries have been talking about that. Uh, we, because of the corneal outbreak in Haiti, the, the cross-border aspect of the Dominican Republic is, is very important. Uh, the uh, color transmission, we already spoke about this and the importance of it. Uh, so it's the multi-sector sectoriality of the rapid response which is giving us the uh, major success and that we need to continue to focus on the rap, uh, roots of transmission of the disease and focusing on, on each one of those. But in the, we, the cases are so far down over 99% decrease from 2011 to, to this year. So we just have really a sprinkling of cases as you saw in the incidence data and we really need to maintain the alert. So in terms of the long-term uh, strategy of preventing uh, cholera from returning, it's focusing both on health and on wash. That's a, that's a novelty. We're looking at a number of treatment centers in the communal sections which don't have current coverage because we need to have, uh, we don't know where the next outbreak is going to be, so we need to have a certain coverage everywhere. Uh, water and sanitation is the key, but we also need that, that health aspect. Uh, we need to improve the baseline uh, of water, sanitation, and of course the water supply and water treatment because if we don't improve that baseline, we'll continue to be vulnerable. Thank you very much for allowing me a few extra minutes, and we will be available for questions. Thank you. Thank you.